According to the United Nations, this year's theme for the International Women's Day is women in leadership achieving an equal feature for in the COVID-19 world. Um, they, they celebrate the tremendous efforts by women and girls around the world in shaping a more equal future and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. It's also aligned with the priority theme of the 65th session of the Commission of Status of Women, Women in Public Life, Equal Participation in Decision Making and the flagship Generation Equality Campaign, which calls for women's rights to decision-making in all areas of life. They ask for equal pay, equal sharing of unpaid care and domestic work, an end to all forms of violence against women and girls and healthcare services that respond to their needs. Well, joining us to discuss this is a public speaker, Winihin Jemidi. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Ms. Winihin. I am really pleased to be here. Good evening. Great. Um, that, now, that's the UNHCR there talking about women and the, the theme for this year, trying to galvanize more women to be interested in running for public offices. Now, this is something that we have been talking about all over the world for years. I mean, and for a year where we have a, a first female vice president for the United States, not just a woman, but a black woman. Uh, this seems to resonate with so many people across the world. But here in Nigeria, we're still also talking about the 35% uh, uh, affirmative action. And we still have societal issues that are in the way for women to step up to the plate. But for someone who's been working with the loss of women, what are some of the challenges women are facing, especially when they want to run for public offices? Oh, the, the, the very simple answer. So there's a complex answer and then there's a simple answer. So the very simple answer can be categorized um, in a number of ways. The simple answer is there is a lack of support. Um, if you wanted to break that down a little more and to begin to scrutinize the, um, the support that is required, then you could say that the support is at a party level. And because we don't have a lot of time, I'm just going to dwell on that area. You see, when you um, run for office in Nigeria, you have to have a party ticket. Now, um, if you do not get the party ticket at, the, at, that, at, this, at that stage, then you can't run for office. So um, there is a conversation around, is 35% necessary or isn't it? There's that conversation that's going on. And there's, there's schools of thought that believe that women should just be allowed to have 35% of tickets within the political parties. And there's another school of thought that says it should be by merit. So while the debate is going on, you know, that also represents and signifies a lack of support. Um, and then, you know, financially, uh, there is also a lack of support because women are made to... I want to be very polite about this, but in many cases, you find that um, there's a price a woman has to pay to get the financial support required to run for office. So I have spoken about three different types of support. There's also the idea that the system is already fixed. And there is a book by um, Aisha Osori that alludes to this when she speaks about her own experience in running for office, where behind closed doors, the men have already taken the decisions. Mm. They've made their decisions as to who is going to get what ticket long before it is open to the public space. So I've touched on at least four areas where support is lacking. Mm -hmm. And that is a very simplistic response to your question. Now, let me take you up on some of the things that you have mentioned, especially when you talk about finance. Now, we also know that Nigerian women are very, very industrious. Most of the time, Nigerian women support and grow businesses that are owned by their husbands. And some of these women stand alone have been able to spin, uh, you know, their businesses into gold. But the major issue I always yes. have is how come we do not have women lining up behind other women to support them? But we have more women supporting men lining up behind these same men who, who take decisions behind closed doors and leave the women out. Can't 
the women learn from the experiences that we've had over the years and the patriarchy that has been hanging over our heads to step up to the plate and begin to support other women with all the resources that we have. Can we not do that? This is, I, I mean, this is one of the best articulated questions that I've heard in relation to, to what women face when they choose to run for office. Um, and this is something that is changing. So if you look across the landscape, um, the Nigeria's advocacy landscape and advocacy as it relates to women running for office, you begin to see a lot of, of movements now that are rising on the ground swell of the, this question that you ask. So you've got um, themes like women supporting women. You've got groups that are now rising up to say, we want to put our money where our mouth is and train women to run for office. We want to galvanize um, in a ground swell behind other women. And But this is very recent. This is probably just over the last two or three years where we're beginning to find that that is happening. Now, um, you, when we speak about finances, it's not just money you've made, you know, because if you take all of the money that you've made and put it behind a cause, you can walk out of that cause and be completely emptied out. So you're right in saying that there is a need for support. Now, what has happened when women are looking from the outside in is that you find stories that are heartbreaking as... Um, someone who's running for office gets to the the voting booth or the voting center, the polling booth, the voting center on a particular morning. Uh, uh, um, uh, there, there's nothing to show that she she had gone through the the process to run for office. Her ballot box is not there. Her name is not on a ballot box, and there are some stories that have actually come out um, of whim of. of of this kinds of situations where women are stripped naked, they're booed, they're, they're you know, um, made fun of when they get to the polling booth just to scrutinize what is going on. Hmm. And so in terms of support from women, there are so many different ways in which we must galvanize behind each other. For instance, you have to have women that say, you know what I'm going to do? This group will be at every polling booth right away. And even more than that, I personally know one or two women at the end of the voting day, their ballot boxes have been carried and have disappeared into the, into, into the bush or into the forest. Now, these stories are not spoken of. And so um, what we try and do, my organization is called Women and Youth in Governance and Politics. And what we try and do here is to tell stories. And as we tell stories that are real and authentic and true, our hope is that other women listening in decide, you know what, I'm going to respond to the story and I'm going to respond by taking a portion of the problem or a portion of the challenge and I will throw my weight behind it to see that more women and um, in my case more young people as well are in political leadership positions. Mm. So there is a clarion call. There is a call not just to women but to men and I think this is why my organization talks not just to women and doesn't tell stories uh, of only women but we tell stories of women and youth mm. because as you begin to um, speak into the minds of the younger people, both male and female, their response to the issues that women face, their response to the issues that young people face when they run for political office, begins to carry a different kind of sound that becomes easier for people to respond to. So we are in the business of telling stories. And indeed, the support is required around finances. The, the, the support is required around advocacy. The, it's required around research. What what are the numbers telling us? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many areas where we must begin to galvanize support behind each other. I want to talk a, a bit quick because we do not have time briefly about internal party politics now. The reason why, I mean, I've, I've talked about this so, so much that I can, you know, literally just <laughs> picture it. Most times, or the only time that women are really called on in, in, Internal party politics is when they want to have campaigns. And when it comes to holding mm -hmm. sensitive positions in the party, 
they always end up with being either the party treasurer or the women leader, mostly women leader. So they're not exactly. seen to be capable to hold other offices. And could this be, and I'm posing the question to you, could this be because we, the women themselves have not been able to pull their weight within the party? Because if we see, I mean, I'm imagining a political party that wants to win an election without the support of the women. So how can without the women, women? Yeah, exactly. So how can the women pull, begin to pull their weight and band with each other? We're not saying women versus or against the men. We're saying women for women no. so that women can grow. How do they do that internally within the parties? Because I tell you what, I, I know a lot of people who have in, introduced their daughters into political parties at an early age, give, making sure that they're registered. But how do these people get other people like them to join political parties, understand why they should be there and pull their weight, not just to be part of you know, a women's group in the party? Have, have you watched the movie Wives on Strike? Uh, it was directed by Omoni Oboli. I, um, I, uh, when I, when I watched that movie, one of the things that I, that I had to really commend was that someone would use her art platform to tell such a powerful story. Now, it is time for us to begin to say no. Negotiate, demand what we're worth. If I don't, if women, if no market woman, because you know, they really manipulate in that space when it comes time for election. So if we all said, you know what, we're not voting because we do not find equal representation. So like you say, it's not male versus female. It is simply saying that the world is in balance when only a third is fully represented. So as long as young people and women are not represented, then there is an imbalanced political structure. So what will happen? Just imagine this for a moment. What will happen if we all said no? Hmm. That would and, be interesting. And that, that is my answer. There has to be a banding together where we say we strike. We get it or we strike. Hmm. How are we certain that some women would not <laughs> cheat? <laughs> because there is, is a, and, and, and because so, there is well, a universal there's, there's a universal there's the universal statement that some people would kick against, but women are their biggest enemies. So again, not anymore. I don't agree with that statement anymore. I belong to several women organizations. The support that we give each other is on parallel. The first time I had an event called Women Supporting Women was in 2014. And it was, a, I, mean, I see the landscape. I started along this journey um, simply because I read a story of a Ugandan girl who ran for office at age 18 and won. You know, and I was very fascinated looking at my own country and wondering how many young people would run. And this is where the storytelling began. She was the first story that I, I investigated and the first story that I told. And, um, you know, so it's changing. There, it, it is to the benefit of a certain group to say that we still shoot ourselves in the foot. But I am absolutely certain that over the last seven years, the changes are tangible. The support that we're giving each other is unprecedented. Hmm. Well, I, I, I'm suggesting that we start to catch them young because it's that, at that point that it's easier to, you know, um, get... Yes, which is why, yeah, and there are a lot of young people. So on the platform that we run, Women and Youth and Governance and Politics, there are a lot of young people. And some of the stories are really, really heartbreaking as to the journeys. But you know what? There's a certain demographic that is pan-Nigerian. There's a certain demographic that believes. There's a certain demographic that wants to serve. There's a certain demographic of females that are supported by their male counterparts. And you'll find them mid to late 20s into their early 30s. And it's fascinating to interact with them. It's fascinating to see how they support one another. And it fills me with a significant and a tremendous amount of hope. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Winnie and Jemmy Day. She is a public speaker and she runs an NGO uh, for women and young people who want, to go, who want to go into governance and politics. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Keep up the good work. An absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and uh, see what Nigerians have to say about their local governments. Uh, how many people really know who their local government chairman or councillors are? After that, I'll give you my take. I don't really, uh, I can't really,
account to say this is what the local government is because it's like almost everything is coming directly from the governor. You know, from what I know, that is to the best of my knowledge, you know, like the road constructions, whatever it is, just coming directly from the governor. I don't even know my local government chairman. The only person I know is my state governor. So the name of my our local government is it's just a local government. I don't really know where the place is, but that's just all I know about it. About the place. If we love ourselves as individuals, we should we should be able to assist one another. Not until fine, it's not everything the government can do for us. Fine, let's come down to the local government now. If you get to the local government, it's not until you settle this person before you can be attended to. It still boils down to the love you have for one another. That is the, that is the summary. Here's my take. In the words of the great Maya Angelou, we have to confront ourselves. Do we like what we see in the mirror? According to our light, according to our understanding, according to our courage, we will have to say yay or nay and rise. Now, Ban Ki-moon once said, sustainable development is the pathway to the future we want for all. It offers all of us a framework to generate economic growth, achievement, social justice, exercise environmental stewardship and strengthen governance. Now, leadership is stewardship. One day, every politician will be asked to give account. But do Nigerian leaders understand this? Well, time will tell. I am Mary Anacle, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.